You guys have been so excited, you've literally, <laughs> literally been singing for hours. <laughs> so I assume you're excited for Game 5. Did you expect a Game 5? I did, did not expect a Game 5, but now that we're here, we like everybody else, we're rejoicing because mm -hmm. all of the basketball country and all of the basketball world wanted to see these two teams competing. And they wanted to see them competing in a long series. We got a Game 5, now will we get a Game 6 and 7? Casey, everyone's excited everything what Isaiah just said because no one thought 3-1 last year could happen. Now we're in the same boat. Regardless of how we got there, we're here. Yes, no Draymond Green last year, no Kevin Durant, but LeBron James has said, guys, follow my will. Kyrie Irving says, follow my strength. And the way those two guys led the table last year and they both had 41 in game five, I can't wait for tomorrow. So you're saying there's a chance. That's what we like to hear. Yes, you got to play the ball game, baby. That's what we like to hear. All right, let's look at how we got here in this series. Game one, it was KD showing off 38 points as the Dubs routed the Cavs by 22, getting off to a good start and answering many of the questions. More questions for Steph Curry after last year. Well, they were answered in game two, 32 points, 10 boards, 11 assists. The Dubs drubbed the Cavs by 19, made it look easy through the first two games at home, and many people figuring this series would be very short. But would that be short-lived? They were down a bunch late against the Cavs in Game 3, but this, the dagger, the pull-up three from Kevin Durant, 45 seconds left. The game winner, they beat Cleveland by 5. 3-0 the lead, many people breaking out brooms, but as 3D texted me after the game, put the broom away, exclamation point which was put on by Kyrie. 40-point performance, kind of like we saw in 2016 from him. So what about the dubs closing it out? Here, more on Golden State is our own David Aldridge. The Warriors were coming back to the Bay Area anyway, but they did so on Friday without the Larry O'Brien Trophy. They'll get another opportunity to win the championship on Monday when they'll attempt to become the first Bay Area team since the Oakland A's in 1974 to clinch a world championship at home. And while there's been a cottage industry devoted to the Warriors blowing a 3-1 lead in last year's finals for various and obvious reasons, this year's Warriors team says it's a totally different story now. Totally different situation, different team. They're a different team also. Uh, we're in a much better position this year. We're healthy and we've got Kevin Durant. Um, that's, that's a good thing. But they're better too. They're a better team too. The past is the past. It's definitely fueled us, uh, you know, all year just trying to, you know, keep that hunger to get back to the stage. But we understand we're one win away from um, getting the job done. And, you know, we have a chance to write our own story this year. So this is going to be a, uh, a fun night. We just want to play a good game. You know, we can't worry about what happens after the game. Um, we, we, we got to play from the beginning. So if we worry about just the first possession and go from there, then, you know, mentally we'll stay locked in. You know, clearly Golden State knows what it takes to close out. We saw that against Portland. We saw it in a big number against San Antonio. Not able to do it, Zeke, in game four. They were frustrated seemingly with maybe not only the Cavaliers, but the officiating. What did you see in the game? Well, I thought, I thought Cleveland came out and they really took the physicality to Golden State, not only on the offensive side of the ball, but the defensive side of the ball, too. They were closer. They were contesting shots. And I think the home crowd really, you know, got Cleveland going. Their early shot making really, you know, inspired them to play a little bit better. What I'm a little concerned about right here, just in terms of what I'm hearing, I'm hearing one team talk about playing for fun and just having a good time. Where Cleveland is still in desperation mode, playing for their life. And Golden State, in order to close this Cleveland team out, they really have to come with kill mentality. Because if they don't come with kill mentality and they come in to have fun, then we're going to have a game six. Well, and isn't the pressure 3D really, I don't want to say all, but much more weighted on the pendulum towards the side of the Warriors because the Cavs, everybody thought, would go home after game four. They're still in it. Meanwhile, the Warriors, they've got to put a stamp on this season and not let it get away like they did last year. Yeah, I agree with you, Casey, and along with you, Isaiah, that if you want to close this thing out, you have to smack the Cavs in the face early and let them know that we're not playing a game six because that first quarter, Isaiah, is going to set the tone for the rest of the ball game. I say it again. In game four, it was the first, first quarter they won throughout the whole series, and they never took their a foot off the pedal. 
big shot making, taking away space early in the game, putting the pressure on the referee to call us a foul. Oh, wait, wait, because me. if I'm this tap, far away, tap, Casey, tap. if I'm this yeah. far away, this yeah. is not a foul. If I'm this close now, I'm putting the pressure on the referee. That's what the Cavs did in that ball game. They put the pressure, the force in that game. Yeah, I got it, Charles.